that's when when the brightness of what God is trying to do comes through in your life. Let me just testify. I'm a proud HBCU graduate of now defunct but never dead Bishop College. Bishop College became my North Star during a dark season in my life. My daddy had died when I was 14 years old, and I ain't gonna lie, I could not see my way out. I walked on the Bishop's, Bishop's campus as an insecure and broken young man trying to figure out this thing called life. But while I was at Bishop College, my Bishop took my brokenness, and God used Bishop to allow what was broken to open me to what what God was up to in my life that was so good I gotta come over here every now and then God will allow what happens to you to leave you broken but it's when you are broken that you become open to what God is up to in your life anybody ever been broken but it was while you were broken that you became open to something that you never would have been open to had you not been broken because there on the campus of Bishop College, God showed me images of strong black professors. Harry S. Wright, who showed me intelligence was cool. And whenever he walked, he walked like he had an appointment to keep with himself. And so I began to walk across campus smooth like Dr. Harry S. Wright. Because I found someone whose footsteps I wanted to walk into. That's the gift of HBCUs. HBCUs allow us to see us as intelligent and smart. And the next thing you know, smart becomes sexy. The next thing you know, intelligence becomes inspirational. The next thing you know, you understand the wisdom of Carter G. Woodson. If you see it, you can be it. And so in that dark moment, that's when I discovered what God was up to in my life and God brought some of y'all here today because you're in a dark season but it's in your dark season you look up and see the north star of God ordering your steps and opening up your life to what God is up to next so you've got to envision what's gonna be while you're going through what is there's something else the text says I saw the new no I gotta stop and do that the word new, I know I was a preacher for y'all, and, and I heard uh, Vivian Picard was going to be here. So, Viv, I etymologically unpacked the word new in the Greek New Testament. There are two different words for new. I'm going to mention you New, watch this, in time, or new in kind. Okay, 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 you missed it. New in time. Uh, if you have a, what, 1984 uh, Ford and now you just bought you a 2010 Ford, it's new in time, but it's still a Ford. Uh, uh, but if you have an 84 Ford, and you decide to get what? A, a 2018 Ferrari, that's new in kind. That means it's something like you've never seen before. It's something new. God is saying, I'm about to do something you ain't never heard of. I'm about to do something you've never seen before. And so sometimes you've got to experience the chaotic in order to open yourself to something that is new. Because God ain't talking about renovation. God is talking about replacement. So why are you trying to renovate what God is trying to replace? Why are you trying to edit while God... God is trying to give you something brand new. Y'all didn't get that? That was kind of good. But watch this. I'm not even done. Because, because, and so here it is. Because see, so y'all are adding time to this sermon because you act like you're not getting it. So when you sit there and look at me real crazy, it adds five minutes to the sermon, okay? So the best thing to do if you want me to cut this thing is to start shouting as soon as possible. And that will cut the message, okay? But since you didn't get this, I got to add five minutes. So, so last Sunday after church, members come up and they told me that they said, Pastor, we experienced something that you can relate to. We got to 
to upgrade. And so the wife was telling me how her husband had put them in this, uh, had made reservations for them in this, in this motel. It, uh, uh, it's called Sweets, but it's really a motel. And so he's trying to save money. She said, she said, Pastor, it's a three-star hotel at best. And really, it's a one-star. But, but, but they said three-star. But Pastor, God is so good. A storm hit the area that night when we checked into the hotel. It knocked out the power. And the hotel manager, feeling sorry for us, said there's only one hotel in town that has any rooms available. And so we are going to give you a free upgrade to this hotel. It's five-star. It's a rich call today. And so, Pastor, <laughs> we left a three-star hotel and got upgraded to a five-star hotel because the storm upgraded us come here because every now and then God will let you go through something because God is trying to upgrade you anybody been through something and the storm upgraded you wait I I, 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 I gotta give y'all this because it gets even hotter I'm gonna read the text I'm still in Revelation chapter 21 Revelation chapter 21 verse 2 and I saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven and a bride beautifully dressed for her husband I heard a loud shout from the throne saying look God's home God's home is now among God's people he will live with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them. Preach, Freddie Hayes. I'm about to do that thing because after our perception, we now have what? The presence. The presence of God. As you go through what you go through, that's the good news. When you going through, you ain't going through by yourself. God says, I'm coming down from heaven to dwell with you. And the word there, watch this, in the Greek is the yeah. same word that's used in the Greek Septuagint of the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible that talks about the tent or the cool. tabernacle and how the people of God going through the wilderness had the presence of God because God was in the tent or the tabernacle. You see, the wilderness is in between. It's between where you've been and and where you're going at. And I don't know about you, in between can be real mean, but it's so good that when you're in the in between, you're not yet where you're going at. God steps in the in between with you, and God walks with you while you're in between. God grows you while you're in between. God gives you peace while you're in between. I guess I ain't got nobody here, but is there anybody here who can say, Pastor, you in my Kool Aid? I'm not where I'm going, but I'm sure glad I'm not where I was. I'm in the in between, and you just told me when I pass through the waters, God is with me, and through the flood, God. God is with me because God is the God of the in between. In between. In between.